Hi, this is Chris Angelini. I'm the managing editor of Tom's Hardware, and today we're going to take you through a little experiment that we wanted to run uh, comparing Intel's Core i5 and Core i7 processors that uh, we bought at retail, and we're going to clock, clock them at their base clock rates with Turbo Boost disabled. We're going to turn Turbo Boost on, which is one of the new features of these processors, and then we're going to overclock them and see what kind of performance gains you can get when you have those chips running at a higher clock rate all the time. So there are a few components of these processors that we want to explore in a little more depth because they're going to affect what the performance picture is at the end of the day. Uh, Turbo Boost technology is one of them, that being uh, the ability of the processor to monitor the thermal headroom, the utilization, the voltage and the current, and adjust the clock rate based on, on each of those parameters. The second is hyper-threading, Intel simultaneous multi-threading technology that will kick in when we run threaded applications uh, and Intel says we have up to 30% performance benefit. We're going we're gonna to test that today in some video encoding apps, some compression apps, some synthetics, and so on. A lot of you are still going to want to overclock. These are very uh, flexible processors. They have 45 nanometer technology. Uh, a lot of folks in the forums are taking them up to 4.1, 4.2 gigahertz on just air cooling. So we're going we're gonna to clock our chips, our retail chips, at those same clock rates keeping them at about 4 gigahertz and see what sort of benefits we can add or increase from just Intel's base specifications. With the base clock rates, you know, we got, we got good performance. You can obviously tell the difference. With Turbo Boost enabled in single threaded apps, you do get a noticeable kick. Uh, in multi-threaded apps, it's not quite as pronounced. And then when you overclock the chip to 4 gigahertz, you really get that gain that a lot of you guys look for all the time. In, in the media coding apps, in the compression apps. Uh, it's obviously not there when you're gaming. When you're gaming, it's your graphics card that matters. Uh, we had to increase the uncore voltage, the memory voltage, and the CPU uh, reference voltage, all driving up the power consumption throughout the run. This is going to be one of the side effects of overclocking. It's going to put your CPU at risk, as you already know. But you know that's just one of the trade-offs that you make when you overclock. For the folks out there that are overclocking already, that have accepted the risks, that want the extra performance all the time, that's the way to go. I mean, these chips are very scalable. It's not hard to hit four gigahertz or even higher if you're gonna use uh, water cooling. But for the folks who are, are shying away from overclocking, in favor of, uh, in favor of Turbo Boost, you, you also get a gain there versus any of Intel's previous generation chips. So it's really a win-win for the consumer because you know, on one hand, the, the scalability is there to really crank these things up. On the other, the intelligence is, is in the chip that will dynamically adjust based on the performance needs of whatever applications you're running or, uh, or the power situation. So there's a, there's a lot of benefit to going either way. It just depends on what your usage is.